Praise the Lord. Come on, let's put our hands together for the presence of the Lord here this morning. Hallelujah. You made it. You made it here to Victory Outreach Timid for our Sunday morning celebration service. And we're here to celebrate all the great things God has done within our life. Amen. Has God been good to you? God has been tremendous. God has been awesome. Even in this time of separation, how many know God has been so good to us? Amen. We have so much to be grateful for. And be, on behalf of Pastor Luis and Sister Judy, we want to welcome you out this morning to our Sunday celebration service. Amen. We're going to lift up the service before the presence of God. We're going to ask God's blessing. We're going to ask his miracle working power. And we're going to ask that you would receive a word. Amen. A, a word from God here today. Amen. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, let's go ahead before the presence of the Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, we come before your presence here today. God, lifting up this entire service, God, we've gathered together as a church body there in our homes, asking for your blessing here today. God, we ask that you would just minister and move upon our hearts. I pray you use the worship and the, Lord God, every aspect of today's service, the, the ministering of the word, to, Lord, bring clarity, to bring insight, to bring, God, a revelation, to bring confirmation. God, we give you all the praise for what you're about to do in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Come on. Let's put our hands together as we praise the Lord together. God bless you. Come on, put those hands together as we worship the Lord. Come on. Yeah. Come on, worship the Lord this Sunday morning. He's worthy of our praise. Step out of the shadows. Step out of the grave. Break into the wire. And don't be afraid. Say run into, run into wide open spaces. Races waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. The Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. Come on, praise Him. Oh, let there be freedom in the house of the Lord, yeah. Bring all of your burdens, bring all of your scars. Come back to communion. Come back to communion. Yeah. Come back to the star. Oh, yeah. Run into wide open spaces. Grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom There is freedom Come out of the dark Just as you are Into the fullness of His love For the Spirit is here Let there be freedom Come on, sing set the captives free in your life then you gotta proclaim it you gotta begin to lift up your voice and begin to give him glory and honor begin to thank him this morning begin to thank him that chains are gonna fall that prisons are gonna shake at the sound of Jesus name chains will fall prisons shake at the sound of Jesus name say that again chains will fall Prison shake out the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, lives made whole. Hearts awake out the sound of Jesus' name. Oh, 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 oh. come on, worship the Lord. You're worthy of all the honor, Lord. Yeah. We praise you. Oh, say. 
Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. Oh, the Spirit is here, let there be freedom. Let there be freedom, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, there's freedom in the house of the Lord. Oh, that's why we say, run in. Run into wide open spaces, graces. Waiting, say dance, dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Come on, say dance, dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Say dance like, dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Say dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Say dance like, dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. We say, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are. To the fullness of His love, for the Spirit is here. Let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Come on, say, let there be freedom. Let there. Somebody praise him this morning. If you know he's worthy, just praise him for 30 seconds. Give him a shout of praise this morning. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You're faithful, God. Come on, worship him. Lift those hands and worship him. My shepherd. And he goes before me. Defender behind me, yeah. oh, said I will feel, yeah. said I'm filled, I'm filled with anointing, my cup's overflowing, my cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. Said I won't fear. Say hallelujah, hallelujah. I am not alone. Say he. Restores my soul. Say mercy, mercy and goodness. Oh, give me assurance. Give me assurance that I'll see His glory. I'll see.
Just begin to worship him. We lift up those hands. He deserves it. Come on. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. Lift up your hallelujah to the Lord this morning. Oh, yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, lift your voice and say, My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve, you deserve.
belongs to you. Come on, lift your voice and say, my hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah. Say all of the glory, say all of the glory belongs to you. Say all of the glory, all of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory, say all of the glory belongs to you. You deserve it, say you deserve it. Come on, say. Worship him this morning. Come on, he's worthy of our praise. Begin to just thank him for another you day of his grace, another day of his mercy. Come on. of the Lord. You know, that's a true statement. That's a praise song right there to the Lord that our hallelujah belongs to the Lord. We're so grateful and thankful for what he's done and also for you tuning in here today. Amen. On behalf, once again, of Pastor Luis and Sister Judy, we welcome you out to our celebration Sunday morning service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. we got a few announcements we want to make available to the entire church. If you haven't already been uh, following us online, we want you to uh, understand that you can go to victoryoutreachhimmet.com. You can follow us uh, there also on Facebook and on YouTube. We post all the services there also online. But we want you to stay uh, connected with us uh, through the website, amen, on victoryoutreachhimmet.com. Right there, you can get all the updates of what's taking place. And how many know it's, it's changing from day to day, week to week? And we want you to stay in tune with what's taking place. Soon and very soon, these doors are going to be open. And we want you to be a part of what God is doing here in Victory Outreach Him. And amen. In the meantime, look at your neighbor and say, in the meantime. We want you to go to the website and register for one of our many life groups. We have uh, life groups uh, throughout the city uh, via Zoom, amen. So we want you to download the Zoom app. 
go online and register at victoryoutreachhimmet.com so you can get plugged in and, and fellowship. Yeah, it's a little bit different now through Zoom, but we want you to be a part of what's taking place. We have a, a number of different life groups. We have one that goes over uh, pastor's messages. We have one that's digging into the word. We also have one for marriages, amen? So you can go right there, register today, amen? Praise the Lord. Up next Sunday, we have a very special treat. Evangelist Philip LaCruz Sr. will be in the house, amen? So we don't want you to miss out on that. You know, he's no stranger to the ministry. He's been here since the very beginning alongside Pastor Sonny. And so it's going to be a powerful time, amen? It's, uh, it's, he's going to show us, he's going to uh, uh, let us know how to get victory in uncertain times, amen? And so we want you to be a part of that. It's going to be a powerful time. You don't want to miss out. May 31st at 10 a.m., amen? And then lastly, all the mighty men of valor, let me hear you roar. Come on, get excited. Mighty Men of Valor 2020 is right around the corner. It's going to be November 30th through December 3rd. It's going to be a powerful time. We're praying and hoping, but by that time, things will be uh, resume. We'll be able to gather together uh, there at the uh, Ontario Convention Center for a powerful word from our, our founders, our elders, and all the uh, leadership of Victory Outreach. Gather as men to get fresh instruction, fresh direction on what God would have us to do next. Amen. I'm excited. I want to see all my friends. I want to be together, united once again, receiving instructions. And after everything that's taking place, how many know it's going to be a powerful and explosive time? You don't want to miss out. You can go to victoryoutreach.org and you can register today right there for Mighty Men of Valor 2020. Amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, if you could turn your attention to the screen, we got some very powerful video announcements. God bless you. here tonight that's why we're still here after 40 years is because we still have that fire that burning fire that passion within our souls to win a world for Jesus I live because he's lived I'm free because I found the truth and the truth has set me free people are not going to go back the same and then God says where well, you said you could not do it that's the place that I have called you because you're not going to do it but I'm going to be doing it through you there are thousands and thousands of people that have been touched that have come through the home that have come to our churches not only do we have a local vision but God is going to send you out and he's going to send you out and he's going to send you out and he's raising us up and then he's going to be pastors he's going to be evangelists therefore if any man be in Christ he's a new creation all things have passed away behold all things become new
This October, we're coming together, preparing for one purpose, a United We Can effort, Run for Hope, in 12 different locations. Run for Hope is more than just a 10K or 5K run. It's a movement fueled by passion, courage, hope, faith, and inspiration. Join us for this year's Run for Hope of Unstoppable Help. Register today at runforhope.victoryoutreach.org. We are in it to make a change. you've come God we offer oh God our lives to you Lord and I pray there will be a revival of prayer a revival of sacrifice a revival oh God of paying the price oh God from the young to the oldest in the name of Jesus what we need what we're looking for is Abishai's of the vision protectors and guardians the calling and the vision of victory outreach. God has given us an overall purpose of reaching the inner cities of the world.
God bless you once again on behalf of my wife and I. We just want to say thank you for logging in today uh, to our service. But first of all, I just want to say happy Memorial Weekend, but also thank you to all the armed forces as they have fought for this country's freedom. And really, I want to say thank you to all the family members that have paid the ultimate price for the welfare of our country. Thank you very much for all of you that serve. And really, it, it's a day, it's not a day just to go to the beach or nothing, but it's a day to honor all those that have gone and secure all of the borders of this country. Thank you again. Now, right now we're going to worship God with our giving. It's part of worshiping God as we acknowledge Him that He is the one that provides, uh, He is the one that opens doors and all these things. And I believe that the easiest way for us to understand this about giving back to God is that everything actually belongs to the Lord. Nothing belongs to us, even though we feel like that, we think like that, well, I worked, I did this and all that, but it's really, it, it's God that, you know, opens doors or our health and all these things. And there's ways that suddenly are providing for us. And, and as we serve God and as we're grateful and we give back to the Lord, uh, God will continue to bless you more. It, it's real simple. If you hold on, that's it. That's all you're going to get. But if you're willing to turn around and give back to God, then the Lord will trust you with a little bit more. And it keeps going and going until you're going to see yourself, uh, you know, really getting blessed. But as you turn around and, and release, God will entrust you with more and more. There's many, many uh, people within our congregation that they give. And you can see how God continues to bless them and they continue to give. There's time that I'm even like, really like, wow, you know, God, this is too much, and, you know, and, and, and they say, that's okay, Pastor, because God is blessing us. That's okay, Pastor, don't worry. God is taking care of us. And, and that's a promise from the Lord that as you stay faithful, God will be faithful with you. Not only that, but he promised to open the windows of heaven, amen? And as we, we have seen and as we have, you know, the slides within the presentation of the service. We have four ways to give. And if you log in into victoryoutreachhemet.com, it will show you right there the easy way to give your tithes and offerings. Or you can have an envelope and then let us know uh, through Facebook and our page, and we'll be there to help you. Amen. So, right now, we're just going to pray for this offering. Lord Jesus, I pray, God, that help, Father, help those, even right now, God, those that are, they find themselves, Lord God, in hard times, but as they release, like that widow, and so many other examples that we have, Lord, in the Bible, about people trusting you, God, that, Lord, you, you're able to turn around and bless their lives, God. And I pray right now for this offering in the precious name of Jesus, and we all say... Amen. Now, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to John chapter 11. And we're going to read, uh, starting in verse 1, a few verses here. It's a long story right here. It's about Lazarus. I'm talking about Lazarus. Mary and Martha, and a miracle that takes place. It says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and his sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. 
When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. These same words are said in chapter 9 with the blind men. The, the, the apostles are asking, who sinned? The parents and all this. You know, he says, no. He was born like this so that God can be glorified. You know, he says, look, this young man has been blind, was born blind, but for the purpose that one day I was going to pass by and God will be glorified. Now, let's jump to verse 11. These things, he said, and after it's talking about another thing that Thomas is going through Judea, going that we're going to die and all that. So these things, he said, and after that, he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he's asleep, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. And this is a continually you see this where Jesus talks and the apostles don't get it yet and they have to come and ask and I believe that many times we're like that we hear things about God and God blessing and God doing this but yet we're in another you know we're not in tune and suddenly but what do you mean by that what are you trying to say and this is what was happening with the apostles then Jesus said to them, plain, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sake that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. It's, the language is interesting now. He says, Lazarus is dead, and I'm glad for your sake that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Now many times Thomas get, gets a bad rap. All the time, the doubting Thomas and all that. But right here, this statement that he's making, he, he, he says, we know that actually he's kind of prophesying of what's going to happen after the death of Jesus, that suddenly the apostles are being attacked and all that, and they did die for the cause and he says, and he's saying, you know what, I know that we're going to die, but Jesus say, if you say so, let's do this. Verse 17, so when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now think about that, four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the womb around, uh, woman around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting at, at, at the home. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give it to you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last days. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Now in verse 32, Then when Mary came, when Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in, in the spirit and was troubled, and he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Now this is interesting right here. It's the smallest passage right here. Jesus wept. But John, and what he's doing is that it's a contradiction to the Greek gods who had no empathy could care less about any human being. And now we see here the Son of God, God in nature, weeping for a soul. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also keep this man from dying? 
Verse 38, then Jesus, again growing in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. Now the groaning, it's, some scholars say, it's, it's kind of not like, like a, a pain or nothing, but it's like of anger. One of, because of his friend being dead, but the other one is, is of the hypocrisy of those that are there, you know, pretending they're hurting when they're not. So Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who, had, who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I say this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound, hand and foot, with uh, grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloak. Jesus said to them, Loosen him and let him go. Father, I just pray right now, God. Help us, Lord Jesus, and help me, God, to bring forth your word, God. I pray that you speak to us today, God. Help us to realize that, Lord, whatever's going on right now, Lord, whatever's going on in our lives, God, there is a purpose, Father. And Lord, I just thank you in the name of Jesus. And we say, Amen. What I want to talk to you today is the Lazarus effect. The Lazarus effect. You see, these past weeks, they have been testing times for many of us. We have seen, staying at home, all kinds of things. Situations have brought into our lives insecurities with questions of how is my life or my family is going to be after this pandemic is over. The truth is that you're not alone with these thoughts. See, sometimes we think we're the only ones that are, you know, we worry and all this, we're freaking out, whatever, but there's many other people just like you. Not everybody's just standing and whatever, and God's going to do, no, 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 no. And that's okay. You're not the only one that is thinking this way. And today I'm talking to you, I'm talking to the Christians and not to the secular world. Because I believe, in other words, for us as Christians, that a Christian... Uh, this makes it harder to go through these things and then suddenly start saying things that I'm worried and all this because we hear comments like, where's your faith? Don't you trust in God? And then, you know, I thought you were a Christian and all kinds of things like that. When the world can say all these things and not be persecuted for that. But today we're going to look at this event that took place in the time of Jesus walked on this earth. The Lazarus effect. And listen to me. This effect is the transitional period from bad to good. From worrying to gladness. From lacking to being provided. From failure to success. So let's look at this story. See, it's reminding us, first of all, that God can do anything. It reminds us that God works in the dark or behind the scenes. He's always working. It's not like he stops and then, he, then suddenly you're in a predicament and then God says, oh, i got to go help him now. No, everything is orchestrated. Everything is there. And yes, we do have a free will to either move according to his will or do this or be obedient to his word and all that. But God is still working. It reminds us that man's impossibilities are God's opportunities. That what you see as impossible, it's an opportunity for God. 
to move in your behalf so that you will turn around and glorify him. See, it's teaching us that God is not glorified by our sins or sickness and disease, but he is glorified by our deliverance, our healing, or restoration. In the story, we see that someone comes to Jesus and tells him that Lazarus is sick. But Jesus waits two days to respond. As a matter of fact, let me say it like this. It could have easily been 12 years, just like the woman with the issue of blood. Or how about 38 years, like the man at the pool of Bethesda? The point is, it doesn't matter how much time it takes because God has its own timeline. And that's what you and I need to understand. God has his own timeline, and God's going to move according to his time when he, when he decides this thing to take place. Because many times we're expecting for God to move, yet we're not ready to receive the blessing. We're not ready to. It's sad to say that I, I've seen individuals that we have prayed for. We, you know, this and that. And suddenly they, they got a new liver. But what happens? They got that new liver. Now they're doing dope again. They're drinking again and all that kind of stuff. The point is, like I said, it doesn't matter how much time it takes. Because God has his own timeline. It doesn't matter how long, how wrong, or how tough the situation is. It is all the same to Jesus. And I think that we can say, thank you, Jesus, because it doesn't matter. You and I are the ones that go through changes. You and I are the ones that are trying to figure it out. You and I are the ones that are trying to find an answer here and that's why we go here and there and try to get all this like what do you think and what are that and all but we don't go to the source which is God let me explain something it is the same part now listen carefully it is the same power that heals a headache that drives cancer out of your body it is the same power that heals uh, you know, some pool muscle that drives out demons. It's not like, oh, it's just this little thing, so I'm just going to use the, my power changes to this. No, no, God doesn't change. And sometimes we see God like that. We think, well, this is, well, I can handle this one, or I can handle this. Oh, that's a little bit too big for me. Well, I don't know, and sometimes we wow, this is a big one. I don't know if God's going to be able. We don't say it like that. But as doubt creeps in, that's what we're thinking. I don't think God's going to be able to handle this one. We bring God to our level. We limit God just as you and I are limited. Remember, he is God. We are not. After two days, Jesus says, now let us go and wake up Lazarus. It is interesting how Jesus is almost unwilling to talk about Lazarus as if he was dead. He simply says, he's asleep and I'm going to wake him up. The reason is because as far as God's power is concerned, there is no difference. He's going to wake them up. Somebody here today needs to know that your situation is not too hard for Jesus. You have to understand that even though we're going through this thing, this pandemic, and whatever's going on, and, and jobs are being lost and all this, believe me, God knows about it. He knew already that this was going to take place. It may be too hard for doctors, too hard for your financial situation, or too hard for, your, for you and your family. But right now, Listen to me, right now, Jesus is paying attention to every situation that is taking place in your life. He's paying attention. 
He's not too busy over here and trying to hold the universe together. And let me see if I have some time to, to take care of so-and-so, to look down and, oh, there's Darius, poor guy, I forgot about him. Oh, there's uh, Abraham. Oh, man, uh, uh, you know what? I allow this to go. No, no, no. God is paying attention to everything, everything that is going on in your life. every situation because Jesus is the healer provider comforter comfortable uh, comforter and much more he, he he's there to bring comfort to to help you to bring peace to appease you to in other words when things are getting that don't slow down take it easy I'm, I'm here for you right now don't 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 panic healer not just physical, emotional, mental. Provider? He's going to provide. He's going to provide for you. Maybe not what you want, but all your needs are going to take care of. He's going to take care of them. That's why, listen to me, the reason I'm saying this, these things, that's the reason why you and I can never give up. Don't give up. As a matter of fact, that's why I'm here today. Today, this Sunday, to tell you to never quit. That should be in your vocabulary. Quit. I remember when I was in the university in the beginning, the first year, it was hard. Different world, different environment, the whole nine yards. Not only that, is you would just go, we would, and we, I was a full time student, but we would just go one day, Thursday, all day long, from 11 o'clock till 10 o'clock p.m. Every class, four hours. Bunch of papers, bunch of reading, and all that kind of stuff. But I remember, because it was a group of us that were there from Victory Outreach, and we were going through the same thing. We were the first pioneer in our experience of going into higher education like that as a group. But I remember one of them, Philip Marquez. He's in Tijuana right now. He used to tell me all the time, Luis, we can't quit, man. We can't quit. Don't even think about quitting, because we are, we are trailblazing right now for the those that are coming behind us we have to pay the price right now and do whatever we have to do to succeed and to be an example that yes us ex dope fiends ex, ex drug addicts gang members or whatever that there is a future for us and that we can accomplish great things for the honor and glory of jesus christ don't quit there's others right now watching you First of all, never, never quit believing. Never quit professing that God is able. I'm not telling to be going, God is able. God is, no, 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 no. I'm talking in yourself. No, no, no. God is able. Yeah, but I know that. I, and these are conversations that many times we have within ourselves. We're not talking to anybody. We're talking within ourselves. Oh, God, please. I don't know. Man. Uh, uh. Profess that God is able. Never quit praying. Keep praying. Keep asking God. That's what prayer is. Prayer is a conversation with God. It's not about fancy words. It's all you're saying, God, just do you hear me, God? Do you understand me, God? That's why God loved David. Because David, you know, as he writes and all this, David had this relationship with God that it wasn't like he's like afraid to ask. He was like, why do you do this to me? Why do you allow this stuff to happen? I'm here serving you. And this is taking place. Look at all these heathens. They're prospering. And here I am hiding and all that. He was transparent with God. And then after he's saying all these things, it's like getting it out of his chest. Then suddenly he turns around and says, oh, God, well, you're great. Oh, God, you are wonderful. God, this and that. Let me tell you something. That when you talk to God, being honest with God, he's not going to be surprised. He's not going to go, oh, wow, I, I, I didn't think you can 
you would talk to me like that. No, that's what he wants. He wants to hear your heart. Not a dressed up prayer to impress. You're going to impress God when you're honest, transparent with your heart, and you talk to him. That is prayer. Never quit praising God. Always give honor to God. Because you are closer than you think. You are probably right now on the edge of a miracle. That's when the enemy comes and hits. When the blessing's right around the corner. It's right there. You don't see it yet, but it's right there. All this time God has been preparing you. But you've been caught up in the preparation and not in, in, in other words, the blessing that is coming right up ahead. And this story shows us how sometimes God will delay answering our prayer. And you might say, well, but why? Why, pastor? Why does God do that? How come he doesn't move when I pray? Because this way, God alone gets all the glory. See, this story of Lazarus represents a hopeless cause, a permanent situation, a condition beyond restoration. When they rolled a stone across uh, that was see the, to seal the tomb, and man, it's over. It has been decided. And it's never going to change. When they put that stone, that's what they're saying. It's over. Guy's dead. It's been decided. Do you have any questions? No, he's dead. Sure is dead. And it's not going to change. Sad to say that many times we look at our situations with a negative eye. It's like if we just stop or end the story of Lazarus when he is dead inside the tomb. That, that's it. That's as much as I'm going, well, poor guy. He died and he was, you know, a love God. I mean, Jesus loved him. He loved that family. This is a household where Jesus would stop and eat. And they would take care of him. They were his friends. They were not just people. They were his friends. That's why Jesus cries. He weeps. It's a friend. It's not just somebody that he knows. But sometimes it's, you know, it's like if we just stop or end the story of Lazarus when he's dead inside the tomb. Sometimes that's where we're at. We're going through these changes. It's like we're dying, all this, and we end up everything, the story. This is it. I'm dead now. Forget it. I'm giving up. No. See, because the message behind the story of Lazarus is a story of redemption, of resurrection, of healing and deliverance. Now, the most intriguing thing to me is, why did Jesus wait four days to get to his friend Lazarus? The family hired professional mourners. They would do that. People would come, and that was their job. Ah, cry, and the whole thing. Martha tells Jesus, you are too late to be able to heal my brother. And I'm going to allegorize right now the scripture because there's, there's also uh, uh, a Jewish tradition believed that the soul of a dead person would stay around for three days and it was confused and all that. Some others say it was seven days. It goes back to the arguments. So if Jesus brings Lazarus back from the dead, the people will say, in other words, if in three days or whatever, the people will say, that's not a miracle. Lazarus' soul decided to come back to him. So by the fourth day, everybody knows that Lazarus is dead. No hope of him coming back at all. In verse 39, Jesus says, Take away the stone, Martha, the sister of the dead man, says to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, 
for he has been dead for days. So even if this tradition that I mentioned does not apply here in the Johannian theology, but at the same time, it's, it's Martha's making a statement that th he's dead. He stinks by now. His body is being decomposed already. And it was a sign of being dead. But now on the fourth day, at the voice of Jesus, Lazarus is raised from the dead. And the end, listen to me, and the end becomes a new beginning where death had ruled for some days over Lazarus' life. Now, on the fourth day, his life, his life begins again. And that's what I'm saying to you. Right now, you might feel like you're in the tomb, but let me tell you, by the end of this message, Jesus is going to say, Lazarus, come forth. And God, in other words, you've been dead already, thinking that you're dead, but God is about to give you a new beginning, a fresh start. Are you hearing me? Come on. Somebody say amen. And that is the message of the Lazarus effect. God is not finished with you. You may be bound. You may look dead and act dead. You might look like you're way beyond the hope. But at the sound of his voice, the dead will rise again. What I'm saying is that you and I, no matter the circumstances, we are not unreachable or beyond hope. God can reach and touch your life any moment, any second, whenever he wants. You and I, just like Lazarus, we have to pay attention so that we can hear his voice, the voice of Jesus. Sad to say that many times we, we are hearing all kinds of different voices. We're always here, you know, calling your friends and calling this and calling that. And uh, what do you think? And what do you think? And you talk to people that are not even saved. How, how are you going to get some insight into your Christian walk when you're, you're believing? And yes, don't get me wrong, there's people out there that are lost, they're heathens, but they have common sense, they have some wisdom, but there's things that are spiritual, spiritual matter, that only somebody that is full of the Holy Ghost can give you a spiritual answer. And the mistake that we make is that we're over here calling people. They don't come to church. They're not even saved anymore. They're still worldly and all that. Comadres and friends and whatever. And, and here you are. What do you think? And what about this? And well, Yeah. You're going to get all kinds of answers. Worldly answers. That's why sometimes we need to pay attention Talk to people that are full of the Holy Ghost. And I believe, hey, let me be honest. In my Christian walk in the beginning, I didn't want to ask somebody that is Holy Ghost because I know what they're going to tell me. They're going to tell me, get your act together. You know what, Luis? Get your act together, man. You're messing around. You're over here. You're over there. You're, you're still getting drunk. You're still doing this. And you expect God to move? Come on, man. But if I talk to somebody that's in the same condition that I am, they're going to give me the answers that I want to hear. Poor thing, yeah, you've been trying hard. You know, they, they don't have no compassion on you. They, oh, poor thing. And somebody say amen or ouch. We're hearing all kinds of different voices, all types of advice coming to us constantly from our family members, from our friends and so on, co-workers, You and I need to hear, <clears throat> excuse me, the pure you know, word of God has to come and, and hit us. And even if it hurts, it's for the good. Paying attention to his word, the Bible. Hear what he has to say in prayer, like I said, as you're talking to him. Sometimes we just keep talking and talking and talking, and we, we, we don't give him time to speak to us. And hearing what is coming across through preachings and teachings. 
Remember that when Lazarus heard the voice of Jesus, he was resurrected. In the same way, there are many Lazarus, listen to me, out there right now, ready to hear the voice of Jesus Christ so they can also be resurrected. Listen to me. That's why we need to get our act together. That's why we need to start trusting God. If anybody is us right now, those that have been saved and been going through this thing and really trust God and see God move in a powerful way within our lives. Because of, of this pandemic, there are many people right now waiting for some type of answer. I'm talking about drug addicts, gang members, and many other people are tired of all these voices that have come to their ears to find out they were not true. We hear all kinds of stuff in Facebook and so on, uh, the government and this and that and all kinds of things. And wear a mask, don't wear a mask, this and that. Uh, like they say, okay, uh, President Trump said, we're going to open you know, the churches. It doesn't mean that we just come running into the church. There's still sickness out there. There still is. And so to do that, we have to take some steps. And if somebody decides to open the doors and let it be, hey, so be it. That's on them. Not only that, but myself being under an umbrella of victory, I, I can't go rogue and do my own thing. We work together. But what I'm saying, because of this pandemic, there are many people right now waiting for some type of answer. God is calling some of us, listen to me, some of us. As a matter of fact, God is calling some of you right now. Right now, God is calling you to get ready for this great harvest that is about to take place. God is calling us, Victory Outreach. God is calling us to get ready because out of this, great harvest is going to take place. A great movement, a revival is about to take place in America. It's not just here in Heaven. It's not just here in California. It's not just in the United States. This thing is around the world. That's why we, we need to have enough of, of the love and the compassion of Christ to look beyond when these people come, beyond their past, and be ready to equip them for their destiny. Not just so they can come to church and be part of the congregation. No, so they can fulfill, they'll be able to fulfill what God has called them to be. Sad to say that if the church is not able to do this, as far as making a difference in the world is concerned, then the church is irre irrelevant. Why are we here then? Just to have a good time? Just to have good worship? Just to say, hey, I came to church. Hey, I'm here. Hey, I logged in. Hey, many clap already. Yay, prayers and all. Amen, amen. No, there's more than that. God is calling us to get ready for the harvest. Jesus says the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Pray, pray that God will send more workers into the harvest field. See, listen to me. And it's not just myself thinking like this. There's other pastors in B.O. Not only that, but there's other pastors here in the valley. Yesterday I talked to one of the pastors, a good friend of mine, and, and we're in the same tune like, man, it's going to take, this thing's going to blow up, man. We've got to get ready for this thing, man. We've got to get ready for this valley. We've got to get ready for this because God's about to do something. We've sensed this since the beginning when this thing started. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm super spiritual, but this thing, that, that's why a confidence and all this kind of stuff, it's not like, oh my God, what are we going to do? No, 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 like, oh, let's do this and let's do that. Let's do what we got to do and all that and put my, you know, I had to change a lot of stuff. Even being right here, I told you already before about a thousand times, being in front of a camera and all kinds of things, but we got to do what we got to do. But why? Because God is about to do something great. God is about to accelerate everything. It's going to go faster, quicker. 
It is amazing how our ministry through Pastor Sonny, listen to me carefully, Victor Outreach, he was able to see a great spiritual disturbance, but also a great spiritual revival unleashed on the entire earth, on this world. Because as we were in Mexico for the regional meetings in January, we could hear this urgency in his voice to prepare and equip men and women so that we can send them to the four corners of the world. And that, my friend, is what we call the third wave. I remember looking at there, and suddenly when they, there was all these young, I've never, I've never, I've been into those meetings, had the privilege of being there probably 10 years or something, and I, or, or more, but I've never seen so many young people like I saw this, this, this time. Bunch of, and a change took place too with the youth, and things are changing. Don't, don't. Don't, in other words, don't worry if you see changes taking place, regions and things and all that, because God's about to rearrange our ministry also for the thing that's about to take place. It is a new thing that God is doing with our ministry to raise up this new Lazarus generation. Lazarus represents the church that has fallen asleep the congregation of the people have become spiritually lifeless, dormant, powerless. See, I think that before this pandemic, everything was just a routine. We already knew what to do. We would come and, okay, what's going on? Okay, who's doing the announcements today? Okay, cool. who's preaching today? Okay, oh, you're in the schedule. Oh, what's this? Okay, yeah, yeah. How many songs are you guys singing? Well, we're going to sing this, 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 this. Everything was a routine. And just because we saw God's hand still move, we thought we were really in the spirit and discerning what God wanted to do. But it was only God moving because of his grace and his love for his people, the congregation. And I believe this period of time, I know for myself, it's been a time of really reflecting and really thinking, okay, God, why did you call me? What is it? And yeah, I know I'm a pastor, and all, but I want to know my purpose so that I can be able to fulfill my role in this great movement of victory outreach to reach the world for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. Sad to say that the church has become powerless by mixing with the world. The spirit of the world has creeped into the church. But I believe this time that we have been secluded in our homes. It has been a time for many of us to evaluate our Christian walk. I pray, I pray that this time has not gone in vain in your walk. I pray that instead of listening to everybody, that you at least took a day or two days and really meditate like, man, wow, what's going on, God? What, what do you want me to do? How is it that I need to get ready so this, when this thing, when the doors actually open, that I'll be able to fulfill my call? See, that's what you need to start thinking. Not that, oh, we can come together and have church. Praise God for that. Yeah, we're family and all that. But I believe that there's more than that. That when these doors open, you're not going to come just like when, when all these things stop, but you're going to come with, you know, with a new zeal, with a new fire, with a new vision. In other words, that you'll say, man, I know what I need to do. God is preparing me. I've been praying, and God showed me. So if we're honest with ourselves, the outcome of that evaluation is something that we were not expecting. I pray that you are honest with yourself. And I pray that you're honest with yourself right now. And you look at yourself and say, man, I'm missing the mark. I, 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 I'm lukewarm. I just settled. Yeah, I go to church. Yeah, I show up. But I've done nothing, really. I know that I have these talents. I have these abilities. I haven't used them. In other words, I haven't been an offering unto God with my life. 
Let me remind you that God loves the church. And that's you and I. That's God's people. Let me read something to you here in Malachi chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. It says, you have said, it is vain to serve God. What is the profit of our, of our keeping his charge or of walking as in mourning before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the arrogant blessed. Evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. That's the mentality. That's why we can go out and sin and, and do all kinds of things with no conviction at all. Ah, God loves me. God will forgive me. God will this and God will put up with me. And God, and we expect this. That's our Christian walk. It shouldn't be like that. I pray that by the time we get back, we will have a heavy conviction in our lives that will prevent us from just living a casual Christian life. There is a call going forth to his church. God is saying to us as a church, Lazarus, come forth. Because something is getting ready to happen. In fact, it's starting to happen right now. This thing is starting to, it's, it, it's brewing up right now. All over the world, people are hearing the voice of the Son of God. All over the world, people are hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. And people are starting to wake up. All over the world, the dry bones are beginning to rattle as the voice of the Lord has come forth. I'm telling you that the wind, the Holy Spirit is blowing through the valley of dry bones right now. In other words, resurrection power is coming to you right now if you want it. Right now, as you hear my voice, and as you hear the voice, and if you've been paying attention and, and, and really try to listen to the voice behind the voice, I pray that right now God has started to speak to you. And you can sense that resurrection power, that suddenly something is brewing inside of you, that you feel this like, man, I hope conviction has come. And said, man, what have I been doing? Man, God, instead of like, oh, man, I messed up. No, 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 no. Yes, I've done this, but God, forgive me. Forgive me. Help me. I believe that the church is about to return to its roots under this great anointing and Holy Ghost power. See, Jesus is not coming back for a broken down, neglected bride. The Lazarus church is waking up. And we are getting ready to start coming out of the tomb. But we're coming out with a fresh fire, a new anointing to shake the world. Coming out with a new commitment to reach this city, to reach this valley, and to send others to reach the world. And as the keyboard player makes his way, we are coming out with a new zeal, a new passion, listen to me, for holiness. We're coming out with a new zeal, a new passion for holiness. We're getting ready to move and take our place in this great movement that we call Victory Outreach. See, even that, the first Monday that we were there in that meeting in Mexico, I remember we were all like looking at each other like, what happened here? Usually it's Pastor Sonny and then he gives us direction uh, overall and then the speakers start building on what he preached. 
But this time it was all about this. There was no pandemic. There was nothing. But about this. Social media, this and that. We, we need to step it up. We need to do this. We need to do that. And we need to do all this. And there was, you know, preaching and this and all kinds of stuff. And how many of you need training and all. And we were like, whoa, where would this come from? But it was because there's an urgency. We're going to move. He says, in five years. We've got five years. And see, this is just not something that just Pastor Sonny just, you know, oh, I think, well, let's, let's talk about it. No, it's something that God put in his heart because the other day we had, you know, for a training for the directors and staff at the Victory Outreach, in other words, for our uh, inner cities, and, and suddenly Pastor Tom, and Pastor Tom was talking like, like, man, you know what? And he's right there next to Pastor, but he was going like, wow, man, you know what? Uh, this and that, and he's this, and we have to, you can see it in his eyes, the urgency that we have to build, and you know, move quick, but well prepared, so that we can reach the world in five years. It's not that we have 20 years, it's not that we, we've been around for 50 something years. And yes, we have seen this. Thank God that I've had the privilege of, of being here 35 years and seeing our ministry change and this and that. But now there's an urgency. That's why we need to get ready to move and take our place in this great movement that we call Victory Outreach. And I close with this. I'm here to tell you, listen to me, I'm here to tell you, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. Now I'm speaking to you. You've been there in the tomb. You've been going through changes. You think that you're alone, but I'm here to let you know, just like Lazarus, it was considered already a lost case hopeless and all that. But when Jesus came into the scene, called him out, that man had a new beginning, fresh start. And I believe that right now, God is calling you right now. He's touching your heart. And he's letting you know, I'm about to give you a fresh start, a new beginning. That's if you're willing to listen. That's if you're willing to shut down all the other noise that has been coming to you. That if you realize all that noise is what pushed you into that tomb, into that place of hopelessness, worry. What I'm saying to you, those that are coming out, get ready to shake and impact the world for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. So right now, as you're there, bow your heads. Open your hearts. And I pray that probably God spoke to you already. You were able to hear the voice behind the voice. But if you have it, that right now, you would quiet your soul so that God can speak to you himself. Father, I just pray for every man and woman, my God. I pray right now, God, that through my words they were able to hear your voice, God. This is not me, God. This is something that you put in my heart to share to your people, my God. Because you know the condition that we're in, God. But you're calling us. Be of good cheer. The victory is ours. And so I pray, Lord God, right now, that our faith would increase, God. That, Lord, we would put away, God, all childish thoughts, God, to, of bringing you, Father, into our level when you're not. And so I pray, God, right now, touch every man and woman right now, God. Let your presence fall in their house, in their car, wherever they're at, Father. I pray right now, God, get a hold of their hearts, get a hold of their minds, God, and get a hold of their lives. So that by the time we open these doors, Father, 
we can see it in their eyes, God, that they've been touched by you, that they've been revived, God, brought back from the dead, but now alive with a new purpose, with a new direction, and with a new call. And Father, I just thank you right now, Father, for your blessing, for your power, in the precious name of Jesus. And we all say, Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a good clap offering. Amen. Right there where you're at. Come on, rejoice. Don't go back to that cave. Amen. And let God be God. And surrender your will totally and completely to Him. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, give the Lord one more good hand of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lazarus, come forth. Amen. How many know that was a powerful, powerful message? Amen. And you might want to share that with a loved one, a family member. I know you were touched here today, but if you think it will, it will also be a blessing to somebody else, share that message with them. Amen. And we want to continue just to thank you for tuning in here today. And if any of these messages have been ministering to you, if you've really been touched through the ministry here at Victory Outreach Himmet, we want you to leave a comment there at victoryoutreachhimmet.com. Leave a comment, uh, leave a like, and, and just be a part of what we're doing in these end times. So continue to stay close uh, through the website. And reminder, also, we have many different life groups that we want you to be plugged into. And they're, they're a real joy through the Zoom app. Amen. So we want you to be a part of that. Stay connected. We love you. And we're going to go ahead and pray out in a word of prayer right now. Amen. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, let's pray out. Lord Jesus, we come before your presence here this afternoon. So grateful and thankful. That you've pulled us from the tomb, God. At one time, God, dead, far from living. But God, you've blown your breath into our life. And we, we're here now today. God, we just pray right now. God, that you would continue to minister and move. And those that, Father God, got a touch here today, you would continue to water that seed. That they would go forward for your honor and glory. And they would find their place in the body of Christ. God, we pray right now that you would just bring an explosion, God, a revival in these last days when these doors reopen, God. Give us a, a newfound purpose, a newfound focus, and that use our lives. Our prayer today, God, is that you would use our lives for your honor and your glory. God, we pray that you would give us the strength to give a little bit more, to do a, a little bit more, and to make you proud, God, in the kingdom of God. We're so grateful and thankful for the ministry of Victory Outreach. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Come on, give the Lord a good, good hand of praise right there where you're at. Praise the Lord. We'll see you back on Wednesday at 7 p.m. for our fire and power service. And once again, don't forget to go on the website, victoryoutreachhimmet.com. Register today at one of our Zoom live groups. God bless you.